couldn't have built them a couple of years ago, but we can now. Yes, we can build the biggest bombers now. We've got the materials, aluminum from Alvida, nickel from Sudbury, magnesium from Haley, supply trains running day and night from distant raw material sources to the assembly plants. All we need now is the tools. Sure, we can handle the job, but we've got to have machine tools and plenty of them. Do I need many? Brother, the tools I haven't got, you could just about squeeze into Varsity Stadium. I know they're scarce, but it takes 10,000 jigs and tools to turn out an aircraft the size of the Lancaster. There are 55,000 parts in that plane, and we hope to make more than half of them right here in the plant. Yes, we'll subcontract the rest all over the country. We've got parts coming in all day long. From Toronto, Montreal, Brantford, Hamilton, Day and night the telephones ring, the parts come rolling in, the blueprints from the drafting offices, 20 tons of them. Rushed in by bomber, worked over by these engineers and designers, broken down into production flow patterns. They don't look like much when you see them reduced to a few thin sheets of microfilm. But study them a little while, and you'll see that you'll need thousands of men to put that plane into regular production. Thousands of skills, and among them 300 of the rarest of all, the key men of mass production, tool makers. All the tool makers you can get. Want to see me? Yes, Jack. I've got 30 tool makers and I need 300. 300? Where are you going to get them? Can you spare me any men from production? Not real tool makers. Well, they don't have to be. If they can handle a drill or know how to handle a file, send them over. We'll make tool makers out of them. And we made tool makers out of them. Farmers, laborers, men from converted industries, even housewives. And while we were training the men and women, while we were building all the jigs and tools we could, we went after the special machines we couldn't make. Look, we're tooling up for Lancaster production and we need spar milling machines. When can you make delivery? Priority? Yes, we've got a triple plated grade A priority on everything we need. That's how we went to work. First came the jigs and dies. For the aircraft, what the mold is to a coin. But as the new coin is only the first of thousands, so our first fuselage parts were soon followed by others on the flow production line. We call it a marriage when the three parts of the fuselage are joined for the first time. But it's not until the wings are joined that the plane can take off for battle. It's the four engines with their 5,000 horsepower that help her to outrange and outfly the enemy's fighters at four times the speed of an express train. She needs good engines and air screws in this final battle for the air of Europe. In that battle, she can't afford to have blind spots. So our girls check the tail turret that guards the lives of seven men. No plane in the world carries more bombs than this. You can pack a whole Spitfire into its bomb bay. It carries 15,000 pounds of bombs, more than three Wellingtons together. It's a night bomber, and in a raid, it's got to be blacked out like a house. Seats in a battle plane don't have to be upholstered. They've got to be armored. And the men and women who build them carry the lives of the crew in their hands. 
We used to wonder if every small part was worth all the care and trouble we gave it. But then someone would remind us that a plane's whole mission depended on every part, and on the hidden parts most of all. Finally, we gave the ship her first name. Nothing fancy, just KB-700, a production number as plain and businesslike as the machine that was to carry the name into battle. Yes, she was nearly ready for battle. And as we looked at that long, slender plane, we thought of all the work we'd put into it, the months of effort, and now the reward. Some had doubted that the thing could be done, but we knew we could do it. A Canadian job, needing only a Canadian crew. And there they were, right in our plant, Everyone a veteran of more than 30 operational flights, some of them flown to Canada a few minutes after their return from a raid on Europe. We got talking to those boys, and we made friends with them. They'd come together from the coast, the prairies, the east, to make up a crew, just as we'd come from all over Canada to make up a plane. And somehow, as we talked, the plane became a cross-section and symbol of all Canada. The last day before the plane was ready for its flight, we had a party at the plant, open house for everyone. The girls and fellas showing each other the job they'd done on the big ship. And as the dawn broke over the roofs of the plant, we took our big plane out of her hangar, slowly onto the grey concrete runway. Remember, this was to be our last contact with her. To us, she was a living thing. test flights were done, the crew took over, anxious to be on their way. They had picked up one more crew member in Canada, a white Scottish Canadian, Saskatchewan born. They called him B for Bambi. of Ontario unfolding below them like a map. First course, 087 degrees, 087 degrees. Then, as the navigator set his course for England, the coast of the Maritimes gave way to the grey Atlantic. The boys kidded among themselves as they crossed the ice floes way out at sea. I wonder who's taking Joyce out today. I don't know. She probably wasn't going to meet Mike anyway. Oh, yeah? You guys are just jealous because she wouldn't give you a tumble. It was cold at 7,000 feet over the Atlantic, above the clouds. At dawn, when the sun came out, 
They went down a few thousand feet to get warm. Then suddenly, the meadows of old England, as gently they eased her down to journey's end. at their station spot on at 10 a.m. with 350 gallons of gas still left in their tanks to be welcomed by their senior officer overseas and by Canada's High Commissioner. Soon they heard Sir Stafford Cripps, Britain's Minister of Aircraft Production, telling them what England thought of their plane. Recently we've received from the hands of the Canadian workers their first Lancaster bomber to be sent to this country. It's a magnificent plane up to the highest standards of production and performance. We hope it's the first of a very long series, which will fly quickly to the aerodromes of this country and load up with bombs for Germany. And so it did when Johnny Fouquier from Ottawa, hero of many Canadian air battles, briefed the men of the Canadian Lancaster squadrons. Our target tonight, Berlin. Germany is groggy and reeling. If you put the same effort into this, attack tonight, as you did into Hamburg, and you smashed Hamburg, you'll deal the enemy a blow from which they may well find it impossible to recover. Remember, bomb aimers, the pilots are depending on you to take them right into the aiming point. Now, it's up to you, men. Good luck to you, and off you go. How's the kite, Jimmy? All set, sir. We'll smarten off this trip. Two to one on a watch off a scrub tonight. I'll take you two to one. If we're scrubbed tonight, I hope it's in time to make the local pub. Beat the government out of an egg tonight. The Battle of France, the Battle of Britain, the Battle of the Mediterranean, and now the Battle of Europe. 1,000 planes, 7,000 men, 5 million pounds of bombs hurled against targets 600 miles away. B-700 took off into the English night, back home more than 2,000 miles away across the sea. We heard that she had a new name now, Q for Queenie. Tonight, the radio stations of Germany have gone off the air again, as the largest air raid in history is moving to its climax. Hey, listen to that, boss. More than 1,000 British and Canadian heavy bombers are over Berlin again. And among them is the first Canadian-built Lancaster bomber. Why, that's our baby. Hey, have you heard the news? Kill for Queenie, bomb Berlin. Kill for Queenie, what's that? Don't you remember? KB-700, our first baby. On course. OK. Oxygen on. Everybody getting oxygen? Bomb aimer, OK. Call us off OK, Skip. Navigator doing fine.
tonight, tomorrow night, every night, till the job is done.